Are you having ongoing digestive problems? Maybe you have diarrhea, cramping, pain, and you're wondering if a recent C. diff infection can cause problems like this, then you're in the right place because we're going to talk about that topic here today, the impact of C. diff in causing long-term chronic digestive issues, another form of post-infectious IBS. So if you like this kind of information on digestion, nutrition, overall health, trying to gain a deeper and better understanding of what's going on in your body, click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this. One. Now for a quick disclaimer, the information in this video is for informational purposes only. It's not intended as a treatment for any health condition or as a substitute for seeing an actual doctor or medical profession. It should be used as an educational guide to deeper your understanding of your own health and treatment success. If medical attention is needed, don't delay in seeking that attention. All right, let's check out the impact of C. diff in causing long-term digestive problems. So we're going to look at this question, can C. diff cause long-term problems? C. diff, also known as Clostridium difficile, can cause massive digestive tract disturbances like diarrhea, cramping, pain, and even systemic symptoms like fever, body aches, kind of like you're sick with a cold or flu. The Clostridium difficile bacteria can actually be part of our normal digestive flora, like the quote-unquote good commensal bacteria. When it's allowed to grow unchecked by the other good bacteria, the other commensal bacteria in your microbiome, it can get out of control in a sense. Now, again, this bacteria typically lives in harmony with the other bacteria in our microbiome, and not everybody has it in their digestive tract, but a lot of people do, and it's in relative balance with the other microbes and even supports the digestive cells and, uh, and contributes to our overall health. So that's what happens when it's in normal or small amounts in our digestive tract. Typically, the problem occurs when we're taking antibiotics. It could be for any situation, really. Those antibiotics start to reduce the number of microbes, the other good bacteria bacteria that are basically in competition with the Clostridium difficile or C. diff bacteria constantly. And when those get wiped out, the C. diff has the ability to emerge or grow and expand its territory outside of what that normal small amount was supportive for our digestive tract. Now there's too many of them and they're producing so much problems that we start to have major digestive symptoms. So basically you're taking those antibiotics in there, you know, knocking down your good bacteria. Well, the C. diff usually doesn't react to those antibiotics, depending on which one it is, a lot of them it's not sensitive to, it's resistant to a lot of antibiotics. Because of that, the other ones are dying off. And as those ones are trying to come back or you know, trying to recover, the C. diff basically just starts expanding, expanding, expanding. And while they're expanding, they're also producing a toxin. And that toxin can cause your immune system to respond and cause you know a lot of internal inflammation and also systemic inflammation. But also what happens is you get increased water flooding into that digestive tract to flush out that toxin. And when that happens, that's when you get the uncontrolled diarrhea. Once it's treated with either vancomycin or metronidazole, some kind of antibiotic that it's highly sensitive to, that C. diff will recede and you'll become less symptomatic. However, this microbe is fairly crafty and can easily form spores. And those spores are basically like a capsule that protects the internal DNA and the overall structure of the bacteria and doesn't allow those antibiotics to affect them. They basically go into a hibernated state. And then once you're done taking that antibiotic, once it flushes through your system, then that C. diff can start to reemerge again, and depending on the overall quantities that are there and what's going on with your good microbiome or good bacteria, they can start basically gaining territory again and producing more of this toxin. Once that shifts to a point where it's, you know, stimulating your immune system and, and causing that increased fluid to come in, basically uh, how much of that toxin is the C. diff producing, that's when you're going to have the diarrhea again. So can C. diff cause long term? problems, well, yes, it can if it's not eradicated with that first round, second round, or kind of goes unnoticed. You may have less severe symptoms, but they're still there underneath. And there are some studies looking at this, studies looking at the rates of digestive problems following a C. diff infection, and they found that there's much higher rates of digestive problems in people that had previously had a C. diff infection for up to 12 months following that original infection. In fact, they're eight times more likely to be readmitted to the hospital for another digestive just a problem likely. So that persists for up to 12 months, but there's also more general digestive issues like IBS, like symptoms that can persist for even longer, 24 months or possibly even a longer time period. So this is just another form of this post-infectious IBS where there's some lingering amounts of the microbe there that either the immune system or the antibiotic or the local environment microbiome has not been able to keep in check. And it's the persistence of that microbe and the overall long-term damage that happens from that microbe that creates this increased risk for ongoing problems. 
problems. So if you want to minimize your chances of having C. diff or having problems like this, minimize your antibiotic intake. If you do need to take an antibiotic, then taking a good probiotic along with it at a different time of day is a great idea. I'll put a link in the description to two of the ones that I like to use. You can check those out if you choose. All right, that should give you a better understanding of this question. Can C. diff cause long-term problems? Of course, as I said in the video, it can, but if you do have questions specific to this topic or anything like this, drop it in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer your questions. Thank you again for watching. We'll see you next time.